last night. Um, just a couple stops before Mesquite because there wasn't a rest stop in Mesquite according to the GPS. So we got a couple exits early. Um, we spent the night here. It's just like a regular um, rest stop. Like we had like a little casino in the gas station. So we spent 10 bucks on the slot machines last night. We spent a couple minutes in there. It was pretty fun. Um, and basically, the plan now is to get ready to go, um, get dressed. I'm going to change my shirt and pants because it's been the last two days. And uh, then we're probably going to head out. And I believe our goal for the day is to get to Colorado. Um, I have a friend there who we're going to see. Uh, and then we're going to buy a bunch of weed and shit. Uh, have a good time in Colorado. And uh, then after that, I believe we're going to head on over to Illinois. I don't know if Colorado Illinois is going to be a great drive or if we're going to be great in between. But today's goal is definitely Colorado and it's not that far. So, should be able to make it with no issues. Hopefully the car doesn't have any problems. Oh, I also wanted to tell you guys a little bit more about the car. So, we'll start from the front. The very front, I have a 2003 Lexus ES300 a dual fan setup with shroud. Um, here, I'll just that for you guys actually. My engine bay is really dirty though. Let's see all my switches hanging and shit. All that will get cleaned up soon. Oh, this is the lovely CA20. I don't know if I'd say lovely. But, as you can see, I have the two Lexus fans. I hooked them up to a 40 amp relay, but they jo they both just turn on uh, when I put the switch. I don't have to hook them to the temperature switch or anything like that. I just prefer them both on. And uh, that's about the only modification in the engine bay besides the battery relocation. Um, and like a fucking Z32 fuel pump. Other than that, everything else is completely stock, completely uh, normal. I just recently replaced, or not the booster, the uh, cylinder I replaced. I replaced the clutch master cylinder, the clutch slave cylinder. I have replaced the inline stock um, temperature sensor that turns on the AC fan, which I removed because I don't even have AC. Um, and I removed this as well because it was pointless, so I decided to put a mechanical gauge there. That is. Uh, mine's not really ran that great for it. Then if we come back here, oh, well, I guess I shouldn't skip suspension and wheels. So, we have diamond uh, smoothies. Um, I've wanted these wheels for a very long time. Sorry, I forgot this car came out. Um, and then under here, um, we mostly have everything that's mostly stock from the shocks. But the previous owners did tell me that there are MR2 springs all the way around. Uh, that's why it has the it has. It, it goes pretty good, but uh, it does scrape a little bit, it's a little low, and it actually doesn't really hit the floor, it's mostly this tire keeps hitting um, the wheel well. You can see there's some kind of lineage right here where it's, um, like right there, where it's been rubbing up against that. But, I mean, it's nice, it's only when you hit a bump going really fast that it rubs. And uh, the ride height's really nice, it's pretty smooth, it's a little bouncy in the back, but it's nice and firm in the front and then for the inside so sorry I slept in the car last night so it's a little messy but so for the interior a little closer look um, we have a really shittily done battery relocation job uh, the re only reason I call this shitty is because they wrapped it with electrical tape and didn't really mount it in a good place but I have a distribution block, I just need to set it all up and find a good place to mount it. Uh, mechanical temperature gauge, the red switch is for the ignition, uh, that switch that turns red or green depending on which position it's in, that's for the accessories. By that, I mean the clock, radio, the backlight for the temperature gauge, um, it's all controlled by that switch right there. Um, on this side, I showed you guys the, yesterday, but on the top, the silver switch is for the fans, and then the blue one is just a security switch. Uh, basically, I just cut the little sensor behind the clutch to determine when you have it pushed down to start the car. Um, I removed that and hooked it up to a switch. 
and then I plan on hiding that in the future so no one can obviously start the car because this in and of itself is a little dangerous because you know if they force this with the screwdriver into the on position to unlock the steering wheel then they could just steal the car so that would definitely help if I hit that a little more and that's the plan and I really wish this would focus there we go I've got a Nardi Torino shift knob kind of crappy wink mirror that came with the car I'll tell you the roof is covered in a bunch of anime stickers that I did not put there but are cool I guess like that one's got a bunch of titties on it the one over there that's black and white has ass on it, which is pretty cool, I guess. My girlfriend doesn't like them, but whatever. Got some pretty rare ones, some never content ones and stuff like that. And then in the glove box, there's some too. Oh, there's all my weed stuff. Fans. Demonetized. Yeah, so I got a um, Lonely Nights or Lonely Drivers Club one. There's Team Night Kids under uh, the D-Limit street racing or whatever I don't know this what this one was this one says straight to hell I forget what this cat one was and then this one says strike east emotional or something like or strike fast emotional or something my buddy Jacob bought most of them put them in here I just relocated the ones that were on the outside of the car to the glove box so the outside of the car doesn't have any stickers on it what I've actually like put to the car towards maintenance like I was saying yesterday it's mostly um, it was mostly Mostly like just maintenance stuff, spark plugs, spark plug wires, distributor cap, uh, rotor, the cap. I had to buy three different caps because my one year of CA20 apparently three different manufacturers make distributors for that and they all have different caps for rotors. So it took me forever to find the right cap, but I finally got it. The new exhaust or newish exhaust manifold that I got off of Pintara R31 motor, new exhaust gasket, new TPS sensor, all fluid changes. I probably flushed the block like six times unintentionally I only meant to do it twice and then I ended up doing it six times because I filled up the whole system thought it was good had to take it all out again bunch of shit like that I have like little accessory shit like I have a sub and an amp but that's nothing oh I've replaced the rear brake pads and rotors as well as the rear left hand driver's side caliper for the rear uh, I said rear like six times there let all the brakes obviously I pretty much just did all the normal maintenance shit anything that would be required I've replaced a lot of like little stuff like lines and hoses so I'm, I'm leaving all that out oh I got a new windshield basically I spent about I have an exact amount I spent about 1860 something dollars on this car um, in the two months I've had it now only about three to five hundred of that is for the motor the rest was all for the chassis so the rest of that, I, I don't consider wasted money. Um, what we spent on the motor, it's kind of a waste because I do plan on swapping to the KA the second we get to, the, to Illinois. Um, I already have someone there who has a KA and I just have to make the deal and put it in of course. Yeah, so like the other, like if I spent 1800 on this car and 500 of it was for the motor, at least 1300 left. So I'm sure you're wondering like, what the fuck did you spend $1,300 on on a fucking 200 SX? Well, the windshield was like 200 bucks. You know, I bought like a bunch of uh, little shit like car seat covers, a steering wheel cover, the stereo, the sub and amp, um, four new speakers. Like I bought like little, little bunch of little shit like cup holders and shit because it's kind of heavy. It's like little five, ten dollar things here and there that added up. It's uh, the previous owner before me thought it had rod knock because he apparently he was taking it out in the canyon and uh, he hit a dip or something and rip the oil pan off so um, he replaced the oil pan and sealed it he actually replaced it with the oil pan from a different car slightly larger capacity oil pan like and um, ever after he did that he thought that uh, cylinder 3 had a rod knot then he sold it to my buddy Jacob and then it sat for fucking forever and then my buddy Jacob was just like if you help me manual swap my s13 I'll just give this car to you so I took out his automatic transmission, put his new clutch in, um, got everything ready uh, before I left, and then uh, he gave me the S12. So all my buddy Jacob has to do is mount the new transmission in with the drive shaft and then put the pedal in and he's good to go. That's how I got the car was, was through my buddy Jacob and it sat for a while at his house. He never really did anything. He turned on every once in a while, but that was it. He didn't um, work on it or anything. But yeah, I was talking about cylinder three, that's right. So cylinder three was, he, the previous owner thought it was rod knocked, so he sold it to my buddy Jacob and told him he was completely honest about it. My buddy Jacob thought it was rod knocked, so he 
had a single cam KA in his garage that he had planned on putting in there. I took a listen to it. I didn't think it was rod knocked and I told him that he was like, eh, I'm still going to swap it. Long story short, he never swapped it and he ended up giving the car to me. So I get the car home, huge exhaust manifold crack on the back side of the exhaust manifold. There was a hole probably the size of a penny. Like, it was massive. That was just the biggest fucking exhaust leak ever. So I grabbed the new manifold and threw that on. That immediately helped the rod knock sound. And then I looked at intake uh, spark plug number three for the third cylinder was bubbling out of the threads. So I took that off, put a magnet down there and cleaned out the inside and stuff, made sure there's nothing in there. And then I retapped the threads for that spark plug hole. And then again, put a magnet in there to get any metal or anything, cleaned it all up and stuff and put it back in there. And there was no issues at all. There was no bubbling from the spark plug hole anymore. There was no compression issues. There was no, even the sound of rod, the sound of rod knock was completely gone. Um, and the motor, the worst thing that the motor does now is have slight lift or tick. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It doesn't have rod knock, I don't believe. I mean, I definitely wouldn't have made it past Vegas from California if it had rod knock, that's for sure. And it's definitely not making enough noise for that. I'm going to get ready to go, gonna change my clothes and stuff, probably gonna have breakfast, uh, get the dogs ready, and then we'll head out. We'll start heading to Colorado. And once we're there, uh, we will update you guys. So far, so good. Two four, or 200 has had no problems. Um, besides the tachometer occasionally stop, just randomly stops working. But I know, I checked all the wiring for it and it seems okay. So I think it's just like a, either a relay issue, if there is even a relay on that, or the ignition coil, I mean, is probably going bad. But um, that's all stuff that can be fixed in the future. As long as I have spark for now, I'm good. And I don't need a tachometer. Um, so that's everything for now. We'll update you guys soon. We were somewhere around Barstow on the edge of the desert when the drugs began to take hold. These are my Hunter Thompson glasses. I also changed. Um, as you can see, I'm super rice and my shirt matches my car. Uh, it just sort of happened. Um, so we're ready to go. We just got finished getting dressed and getting ready and eating and stuff, brushing our teeth and all that good shit. So we're going to head out now and I will update you guys in a second. So, we're not going to Colorado today. Today's trip is from here, which is about Vegas, or just outside of Vegas, to Green River, Utah. It's uh, six hours, 395 miles. I'm just letting the car get warmed up right now. Still have a half a tank of gas, so I will update you guys when we get there. I don't know if you can hear me over the wind, but we're at our first fill up uh, in Nevada. Here's the doggo. You ready? You ready to go on a trip? In your favorite rocket ship? Zooming through the skies? Are you ready? Are you on time? Are you ready? Are you ready? I don't know how well you can hear me. I jumped across the road in Arizona. I'll only be here for a couple minutes. We just stopped and had breakfast slash lunch in Washington, Utah, which is a weird name to me. Uh, we had Del Taco, um, very good. I didn't think they would be out here. I don't even know if they're nationwide or not. I thought that was kind of only a California thing. But we had Del Taco, it was good. Now we're gonna get back on the road. Here we go. All right, we just got finished eating here at Burger King. Uh, just pulled off the highway somewhere in Utah. Um, we're going to drive another hour or so to a rest stop. Um, my girlfriend's gonna take a nap and then we're gonna drive four or five more hours um, We'll probably end up in Utah tonight. I don't think we're gonna hit Colorado uh, Colorado will probably be tomorrow. We're gonna hit hit up my friend Victoria and then uh, You know smoke up hang out chill for the day, and then we'll uh, continue on our journey So uh, that's everything for now. I'm doing pretty good on gas. No issues so far um, I have developed somewhat of like a noise in the front right wheel hub, but you know, they've sat forever, so I'm sure they just need to be replaced, but that shouldn't be anything too bad, hopefully. Hopefully I didn't just jinx myself. Um, but yeah, that's everything for now, so I'll update you guys when we have a little bit more. 
Okay, there's a lot of wind, so I'm not sure how much of this you'll be able to hear, but uh, <clears throat> the car's broken down. Uh, we're somewhere in the middle of nowhere, Utah. Um, basically, I was driving, and it just started to die. I uh, have surmised that I don't have any ignition spark. Um, basically, what I did was I took out, this is a CA, um, and, and this it's a four-cylinder, but this particular model has four intake spark plugs. It also has spark plugs on the exhaust side of the cylinder, just to make sure that everything's burned off and everything. These are purely for smog, no performance related anything. So all of these spark plug wires get spark, um, and all of these ones do not. So I replaced the ignition coil from the exhaust and from the intake side I swapped them same exact thing still spark on the exhaust side still no spark on the intake side so this leads me to believe the ignition control module basically I swapped this coil on that coil um, and it's the same either way so I know the coils work plug the original plug I cut it off uh, two days ago because it was super crusty and bad and I put this slip on plug on because my tachometer would occasionally stop working. I did that and it still had the same issues. So that paired with the issue I'm having now of getting no uh, ignition spark is leading me to believe that this ignition control module is the issue. Now I did swap this one and the exhaust one, but they they have different numbers on them and they're labeled differently, so I think they work a little differently. Um, hopefully, hopefully I'm not wrong and, and it's something else, but and, uh, the nearest auto zone is like 50 miles away, so. Um, we're literally in the middle of nowhere, like, if you can see, we're, like, the only thing around us for miles is highway. And then the area we're at right now, it's, like, it goes off into the middle of like, nowhere America. So, we're kind of stuck out in the boonies, but should be good. Um, I'm still getting fuel. I get spark on the exhaust side and not on the intake side, so at least it's something I believe I can fix easily. So, I'm not too bum bummed about it or anything. Um, so, that should be... Hopefully an easy fix. We're gonna go, uh, she's on the phone right now with AutoZone ordering the part. Um, and then after that, I'll, I'll let you guys know if that fixes it. They probably won't have it in stock. They'll probably have to wait till tomorrow. But uh, yeah, so we'll probably end up spending the night here, but that's fine. So as long as we get it running again. But I'll let you guys know how it goes. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't take too long.